Hello once again, this is Ken for Copter Source. Wait a minute, how's my hair? My hair good? Is it good? It's good. I'm going to demonstrate some of the cool new modes that came with the latest firmware for the Phantom 3 series. That's version 1.40010. Everybody's been waiting for these modes. Follow me. Waypoints and point of interest. It's very important to remember that if you skipped an update, you must actually go and update to that version first before the latest one. Does that make sense? That probably doesn't make sense, but you have to do it anyway or bad things will happen. And I've been told by several people that the Go app will actually update your controller automatically. So that's cool. Now let's head outside and see what I'm doing out there at an undisclosed location. Well, thanks, Ken. I'm out here in an undisclosed location to demonstrate the new modes that came with the latest firmware for the Phantom 3. I've got a second drone, the eye in the sky. Check it out. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. And I've got my little drum kit over there ready to be the point of interest. All right, so the first thing you want to do is switch over from P to F. That will bring up the intelligent navigation pane and go ahead and choose point of interest. This just releases DJ High from any liability if you smash into anything or anyone. Go ahead and hit agree. Then make your way over what you want the point of interest to be. It might help to point the camera straight down so that you can hover directly over your point of interest. Once you record the point of interest, then you're going to have to set the radius by moving out away from that point. And you're going to have to go out until the radius feet indicator turns blue. And that is usually at 17 feet. Then go ahead and line up the camera as it will not point the camera for you. Then choose how fast you want it to spin around. Even though you may have already set a return to home altitude, it does ask you this. Just go ahead and hit apply. Then off she goes. You do have the ability to change the speed and the direction while it's flying. Right now I'm spinning counterclockwise, but if you slide that over to the left, it will go clockwise. And now I'm going to play the drums for you. Enjoy. Well, I never claimed to be the best drummer in the world. And now on to waypoints. All right, in order to do waypoints, you want to flip over to F again. And then select waypoints. It won't allow you to set them on a map. You have to actually fly over to each place and then set a waypoint at that place. Then when you've done that and you returned, you can go ahead and run your waypoints and it will fly automatically to those points.
I've set five waypoints for this demonstration. Once you're finished, you hit done. Choose your cruising speed. Go ahead and hit apply and then it will upload the waypoints. And then off you go. Again, you still control the up and down of the camera. It doesn't record that. You can pause it at any time and it will resume. You can also increase or decrease the speed while it's doing its route. My battery is a little bit low after playing all afternoon. Notice it says the mission will continue even if the RC signal is lost. That's a handy feature. And there are your waypoints. Before moving on to the next mode, I want to remind you, if you want any of these cool modes, you're going to have to get you a Phantom 3 at Copter Source. Logo. Please don't buy your Phantom from a place online that rhymes with Ramazon because there are real people, really nice people, waiting to help you at CopterSource. That's coptersource.com. Don't believe me? Call Laura or Byron at 832-572-3301. That number again. Did you get it? You write it down? Okay, good. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the follow me mode. All right, I'm sitting in the little green bug. And what you want to do is switch from P to F, and that'll bring up your intelligent navigation screen. You want to hit follow me. I've already set my altitude. Hit apply. And then for the screen to disappear, hit hide. And it is following us. And away we go. Now I think no matter where you have the camera set up when you begin the follow me, it will settle back into a position of just behind you depending on what direction you are traveling. Also, as you can see, you want to make sure that you clear any trees or buildings because it won't adjust itself during the journey. Think of it as a long rubber band with a heavy weight on the end of it. When you make a turn, it will follow you. It won't make the turn like on a street, but it will follow wherever you are going and if you go out of the frame it will eventually catch up this is the town of Huntingdon Tennessee it's a beautiful day outside for flying and we're headed down towards the city square. Now, we've got two drones flying right now, and the idea was to have the one drone film the other drone in flight, but for some reason, they interfered with each other, and I couldn't really get a glimpse of the other drone, even though they are at different heights. But you can experiment with that and probably get better results. Again, here are some pretty tall trees. And there's one coming up that gets pretty close to the drone. And I've got it at about 140 feet, which I'm sure is taller than any tree in this area. You can pan the camera up and down, 
but you can't control anything else with the drone while it is in follow me mode. Of course, you can pop it out of follow me mode anytime by switching from F over to P and then it will hover in place wherever you have done that. The drone will follow the GPS on your device and some iPads don't have GPS installed. You have to make sure that you have GPS installed, which is why when you do follow me mode, you probably want to use a phone if you're not sure. If you get too far ahead of the drone, you can wait in a spot for it to catch up and make sure you do that when you want to take it out of follow me mode so that it's not left somewhere where you can't see it. As you can see, we each have a remote to a Phantom 3. And right now I'm trying to get a shot of the other Phantom. And I've taken it out of follow me mode and am driving it now manually. And there we go. There's the second drone. Big thanks to my friend Gary down there in the orange shirt. Now we're about to set up a point of interest shot here using one drone as a point of interest and shooting it with the other. Again, pointing the camera straight down over your point of interest will help line it up. Now I've switched over to point of interest. You want to set the point of interest, hit apply. If you're flying two drones, close together like this, you want to remember to not have one too close over the other one because the prop wash from one drone can actually knock the other one out of the sky. Once the altitude's set, you want to set your radius. Minimum circling radius is 5 meters. And if you have it set on feet like I do, you can just pull it out until the radius number turns blue, which is right around 17 feet. And here we go. Isn't that fantastic? Maybe you've got a friend who wants a drone. If you want a drone, you can go to coptersource.com and get you one. Just talk to Laura or Byron and they will hook you up. I think follow me is probably my favorite mode. Mode. Kind of a funny word, isn't it? Mode. Mode. Way that's going to do it for me. I hope this has helped you a little bit, maybe entertained you some. If you're looking to get in the drone hobby, give Copter Source a call or just go to coptersource.com. It's a great hobby. You'll fall in love with it, I guarantee. My name is Ken. Thank you very much for watching. Keep checking back. Who knows? Copter Source may let me do another video one day. Brrrr. Brrrr. Brrrr.